Hello and welcome back to the Riverbank Arena and the third and fourth place playoff in the men's competition of the Visa International Invitational Tournament, this Olympic test event. Today's match, Great British men take on India, courtesy of their defeats to Australia and Germany earlier on in the week. As always, watch out for Great Britain's number seven, Ashley Jackson. He scored twice against India in the pool games. It's like change two, that Great Britain lineup there. There's no Barry Middleton, Glenn Kirkham captain to the side this afternoon. In his place is Mark Pern, number 15. Next up, we have India. They've been looking to rebuild this side for a number of years now after their disappointing loss in the Olympic qualifiers in 2004-2008. Their dangers certainly come off penalty corners. So watch out for Sandeep Singh and B.R. Ragana. And we are underway, the crowd already in good voice in preparation for what could be a very exciting day of hockey we have this fixture then the gb women later on in the final against argentina and then the men's final with australia and germany for now though our attention is firmly fixed on this gb and india third and fourth place playoff and sunil turning over the ball Loppy play really from Great Britain trying to pass it out from that long corner and set up back forward to deliver the ball into the circle. Again a sloppy pass forward from Catlin. Fortunately for him and England the touch off Sardar's stick was a dangerous one. Kirkham, Great Britain on the front foot. Rob Moore scored a goal inside the first three minutes in the pool game. An absolute cracker from a similar area of the pitch, drifting in to that shoulder of the circle and then firing it past Chetri in the Indian net. His teammates will be hoping we're going to produce something similar this afternoon. Manpreet, the young Indian exciting player, number seven. Relatively inexperienced as Raghunath powers it into Richard Smith's knee. I'd say Manpreet, one of the more inexperienced players in this Indian outfit. An extremely exciting prospect. What a ball across, and there is the Great Britain number seven, Ashley Jackson. Couldn't quite get there before Chetri made the interception. It was a nice ball in from Tyndall. All week we've spoken about that area of uncertainty just in front of the goalkeeper. All the teams really have looked to crack the ball in, looking for deflections and touches. And Ashley Jackson, he scored two deflections for GB against India in the pool game. Raghunath and Sandeep Singh, two Indian fullbacks will be the danger threats for India when they get a chance to go forward at the moment. It's all Great Britain. Tyndall with the shot. 
Jetri again with the save. The umpire goes back for the advantage off the foot. Stadium here, the River Bank Green, or at least that far stand, fully packed out. Fantastic to see such good support in in the build up to the Olympic Games in a few months' time. Brilliant opportunity for the sides to get an appreciation for what the event will be like. But I don't think anything will quite compare to when Great Britain walk out for the first time in front of their home support at an Olympic Games. In this moment in time, they have a penalty corner. Ashley Jackson, surely the number one option. Richard Smith just alongside him. It is in fact Smith trying to catch the Indian defense napping and he hits the post. So close for the great British fullback. Martin, Fox trying to put that ball in. There's a strike, the side of the goal. There he is, Richard Smith, jogging back to his fullback position. Again, India turned the ball over at the back. Tyndall trying to float in Jackson, it was just behind him. Very difficult to bring onto control. And India really, they have to switch on here. Their outletting from the back has been disappointing to say the least. Again, the ball forward. Turned over. Glenn Kirkman, Great Britain, keen to get the ball moving as quickly as possible. Make the most of this good period of pressure. Jackson battling away. Has to deliver the ball in. It's well intercepted. And now India chance to counter-attack. Sharkhan Decker just bunts the ball out to Manpreet. Shalindra Singh, lovely carry. Dan Fox is there to make the telling touch and turn it away from danger for now. Sadar. Right, into the corner to Sunil. Really good defending by Ian Lewis. Sunil, a little bit unhappy that he gave away the free hit. Rob Moore, plenty of time to turn and play forward. You can hear the band at the top of the far stand. They've been fantastic all week, blaring their support for all the sides, but in particular, Great Britain, I think they got a tuba, trombone, trumpet, and a drum up there. Creating plenty of noise and support. Giving the crowd a few tunes to sing along to as well. Sadar just gets there before Rob Moore. Sandeep, just trying to change the angle, give him space to slide the ball forwards. It almost fell for Sunil. Tried a very difficult skill, the upright reverse. Made even more tricky by the fact that he was under pressure from the defender and the ball was bouncing away from him. Lovely touch from Iglan's Turkey though, he's gonna get penalized for it. Now you think he is going to get the decision, in fact, the experienced Indian defender, a great British player, within the five yards. Here is Turkey again. Over 240 caps for India, vastly experienced, former captain, of course. Speaking of experience, Harry Martin made his debut for Great Britain as a schoolboy. One experience would be for him running out of the, at the Olympic Games. Still only 19. A real young gun in this great British outfit. 
Veterans attempts to play the ball in to their strikers in the circle, unsuccessful, and India can carry the ball away. Again, Shivendra Singh with the run and trying to play in Sunil. Those two linked up a couple of times already in the opening 10 minutes. Hasn't quite fallen for Sunil just yet. Great Britain can't allow too many more opportunities for this dangerous Indian side. Catlin up to Martin. John T. Clark gets his first touch of the game. Sadai plays that pivot role so well in midfield for India. Just sits in front of the back four. Opens up play down the right-hand side. Will it fall this time for Sunil? Doing battle once more with Dan Fox. And it's the GB man who is successful on this occasion. Coming away with the free hit. Dixon. The drag from right to left. Here's Chinglin Sana spinning in circles. Kirkham thinks he sees Ali Wilson ahead. Peeling away towards that far corner. Ali Wilson just turning around, asking players behind him, what sort of press are we in? Where do you want me? Looks like Great Britain are going to try and put some pressure on the Indian back line and press high up the pitch and turn it over in the Indians' territory. Kirkham to Smith and John T. Clark rolling against England's Turkey. Still going, John T. Clark all the way around the top of the D. And Mark Pern can't bring the ball under control on the reverse. Nice carry from John T. Clark. Might have spotted a bit of a mismatch in athleticism between himself and Turkey. John T. Clark. Left out of the Champions Trophy squad in December. Recalled for this test event. Given the opportunity to play for one of those Olympic spots. The Great British selection will be picked very soon. We expect in the next couple of months. The women will be much sooner in the next couple of weeks, in fact. Great Britain still have... Aslan Shah Cup coming up in late May, where they will play India again. And that will be the final opportunity for these players in this squad to play some competitive international hockey to show the selectors what they're made of in these sorts of environments. Birkin, slightly undercooked pass to Richard Alexander. Another player recalled after the Champions Trophy. India, in contrast to Great Britain's press, sitting deep. It's called a half-court press. Inviting pressure on, but staying compact in their defensive structure. Clark trying to link up with Jackson. Jackson did get a touch inside the D, so Ignaz Turk, sorry, Chetri had to make the save. And Jackson following up, wins the penalty corner. Tenacious work by Great Britain's number seven. As we see on the big screen, Ball getting played by Jackson onto the foot of the Indian defender. <laughs> Stadium announcer trying to get the crowd going and the build up to this penalty corner attempt for Great Britain. I'm sure if the men in red can get the ball past Chetri and the Indian goal, the crowd won't need any excuses to join in in celebrating. Smith had the last attempt, hit the post. Will it be Smith, will it be Jackson? It's gonna be Smith again. This time it's good number one running. So Sharkhan Dekka got out quickly and charged down Richard Smith's attempt. I do wonder how many more chances Richard Smith will get before Great Britain revert back. It's their number one option, Ashley Jackson. Certainly worth giving Smith 
Another attempt so close on the last occasion. And this time though, Tashar was more alert to the possible threat. Turkey up to Chinglin Sana. Chinglin Sana, one of the more inexperienced members of this Indian side. Quite a nice mix of experience and youth amongst the Indians. Chinglin Sana gets the chance to play the ball almost through Glenn Kirkham. That was smart in the morning, I'm sure. But for now, Kirkham playing on. Another one of India's youngsters there, Utapa. Trying to play the ball into circle. They've got nine of their 18 here in London, have over 100 caps, and then the four have under 20. So as we said, quite a nice mix of experience and youth. Ali Wilson, it's a difficult skill that on the reverse, trying to trap it whilst moving quickly at pace. Though one that Wilson would have expected himself to be able to execute. As a result, India regain possession. The game finally in the balance at 0-0. By this point in the pool game, Great Britain were already two up. Pern, nice change of pace from Great Britain's 15, trying to link up with Alexander ahead of him. Alexander afforded the space to turn. Here is Smith stepping up the pitch from that fullback position, slides the ball towards Harry Martin as the band strike up a familiar tune once more. Come to a breakthrough so far at Richard Smith penalty corner, striking the left post of the Indian goal. Apart from that, not a whole lot in terms of action inside either circles. India haven't created too much James Fair to worry about. Wilson, plenty of great British players busting a gut to get up in support. One of them is Harry Martin up against Sadar. Sandeep and Sadar working really well in tandem to turn the ball over for the Indians. The England have it back, Great Britain, sorry, have it back. Mark Pern and Grant, Richard Alexander unable to link up. Here come India, the game opening up. James Fair with the touch. Ian Lewis went to ground desperately. Fantastic skill by the Indian players to dink it over into space. Just didn't fall for them as James Fair came charging out. Two promising counter attacks from both sides. Ultimately, lacking a final bit of skill and precision. And then getting into the danger zone, as it were. Play the ball forward towards Mackay. Sadar again. See this from Sadar Singh. All game, he'll just drop deep, loves the ball in his possession. will drop deep in front of the back four. Pick it up and he's not scared to carry it past great British players in Really quite scary areas. India appealing for the corner and they're going to get it. Richard Smith, he was on a good line to make the interception. The rebound off his stick, just brushing his left boot. And up come the big Indian drag flickers. Raghunath, one of them, and I'm sure Sandeep Singh will join him in a second. Actually, I think Sandeep is off the pitch, so. Potential let off there for Great Britain though. The Ragunath did score the opening goal for the Indians against Great Britain 
in the group matchup. Such long levers, tall Indian fullback. James Bear, I'm sure, will be extremely wary of the dangers that he poses. Likes to flick low into that bottom left hand corner or high across James Fair. Let's see what option Raganath goes for now. Crowd falls silent in anticipation. He does go low. It's saved this time by James Fair. The rebound! Wide of the mark. Two attempts on the great British goal survived by James Fair and he's going to have to adjust his padding. Raghunath making his way back into his defensive position. Didn't quite get hold of it as well as he might have liked. James Fair smartly down low to pad the ball away and the rebound did fall to an Indian striker. The shot blazed over the bar. He lands Turkey under pressure from Tyndall turning over the ball on the sideline. Tyndall, nice one-time pass. Trying to find Mackay. Turkey. Tushar Khandaka. Smith backtracking. Does well to avoid the onrushing Indian press. Really calm play from Richard Smith. Or smudge to his friends. Singh out to England's Turkey. We haven't seen Sandeep Singh on for a while now. Questions over his fitness. Hope he's still healthy and able to continue on. Such an asset for this Indian side. At the moment, England's Turkey though. Very suitable to fill in in the absence of Sandeep Singh. Breaking play, Harry Martin has some blood streaming from his face. He seems to be okay. Uh, just got a nick as he jogs off the pitch. No need for the physios to come on. He's just going to have a quick look at it and wiping up and maybe a few plasters to be applied just below Harry Martin's right eye. Almost certain we'll see him. And back on the pitch, we're so desperate to prove himself. Tyndall, a bullish player for Great Britain, really hard working, an engine up front. Unsuccessful on this occasion to create anything down the Great British right hand side. And then it's Turkey. There's a little bit of space here at right half, and Sadar Singh, I think, has sensed that and got involved in the attack. Sunil, brave defending from Great Britain, getting on the line of the ball in. So important that everyone does their job defensively. I think it was one of the forward line. Got back and in position to make the telling block. Neil <laughs> Lewis, a huge swing and a miss. Might be in a bit of trouble here, Great Britain, as Lewis is one of the fullbacks. He's way up the pitch. Sunil up against Dixon and Jackson. They did really well. And the two younger members of this Great British side to close down the space. Lewis makes contact on this occasion, but there's no one there to get on the end of the pass. So important to close down these Indian players when they get going. They love to run. They love to try and take on defenders 1v1. Kirkham loses out. 
to Utapa. Just drops it off to Sunil. Sadar Singh, one of the players who loves to carry and run with the ball. Nice touch in front of the Great British defender and again it struck Richard Smith's foot. And once more India will get the penalty corner. Do look a little bit tired, a little bit jaded the Great British players. Rob Moore dropping to his knees, or to his haunches I should say. And the players who are making their way back to the halfway line, quite slow to do so. Ten minutes to go in this first half. Really an opportunity for the Indians. Sometimes you see two players shaping up to drag flick. India not under any illusions as to who their main man will be. Not even trying to fool James Fair. Raghunath is po poised and in position. It's just going to be a no-nonsense flick at goal, I presume. Went low to James Fair's right last time. Where will he go this time? It is low and this time it's in. Raghunath gives the Indians the lead with 10 minutes to go in the first half. We mentioned before the game that penalty corners were going to be India's main source of threat on the Great British goal. He loves that bottom left hand corner. And the big man slams it home and gives, you would say, the underdogs the lead in this third and fourth place playoff. Somewhat in response to Great Britain going behind, the band begins to play again, the crowd try to cheer and support. There will be a referral here. I think we're just going to check whether the ball did go outside the circle. It looks like the goal is quickly being confirmed. John C. Clark will get the match back underway. Great Britain trailing India. They beat them 4 2 in the pool and never really looked in any danger. Now they may be a little bit worried. Alexander and Catlin trying to get their team back on the front foot. I might suggest Catlin's going to be a bit more imaginative than that to get past Raghunath. Again, Indian fullback wins out on this occasion. Catlin keen to take it quickly. There's a free hit slightly closer to the, the Indian circle. Rob Moore. Taking it quickly to Kirkham. Ball played in and it's celebrated by the crowd, but there was no great British touch inside the circle. So it will be an Indian 16, and there is Sandeep Singh back on the pitch. For the Indian side. Might be just a case of rotation and giving players suitable rest periods. And when they can come back on the pitch, they can make an even bigger impact. Wilson trying to play the ball in. Kathajit Singh, Kabangdam is on the right line. Sunil just lets the ball roll across him and he Jots it into space. It's him versus Dan Fox. They've really been at it all afternoon for the first 25 minutes at least. Seems to be them two who find themselves matched up. At the moment, Dan Fox is winning that small battle. India winning on the scoreline though. Sandeep unleashes a huge aerial ball forward. Richard Smith able to bring it down and push Great Britain forward. It is Smith who's picked up the pass. Mally Wilson, nice run forward from the fullback. 
Alexander with the chopped reverse stick ball in. Will it fall to Kirkham? Glenn Kirkham goalwards. Nice shot. Nice save. Chetri, the Indian captain, with a confident save with the left boot. The two captains coming together there. Kirkham with the shot. Chetri with the good save. Satar, what a pick. He's running completely the opposite direction, just stretched out his stick. Brought it down under control as if it had been softly passed to him. Catlin, ahead to John T. Clark. Nice ball in, difficult ball to control, and Chetri. Just a no nonsense clearance from the goalkeeper. That will be a 16. Great Britain. Come the Olympic Games will have all the pressure comes with being the hosts. There will also be some element of pressure on this Indian team. And rebuilding for the last four years since that disappointing qualification campaign for Beijing. The first time in the team's history that they had not qualified for the Olympic Games. It was such a rich history, of course, in the Olympics. Most successful Olympic hockey team ever, in fact, with eight golds, two bronzes and silver. There's a real movement in the country to try and restore Indian hockey to its former glory. This great British side, they've been on a real journey since Beijing, climbing up the rankings, the FIH rankings, as Shinglin Sana again with the carry down the left-hand side. In fact, since it was announced that the Games would be held in London in 2007, Great British have rose from the 11th ranked side in the world to now the 4th. Ian Lewis gives away possession to the Indians. Sunil, poor pass, really. He's trying to shovel it on towards Tushar Khan Dekha. So both sides would feel like they're on a bit of an upwards trajectory going into this Olympic Games. And at the moment, is India We're proving the more successful in this third and fourth place playoff. Apart from Richard Smith's drag flick, which struck the post, Great Britain haven't created too many opportunities. Glenn Kirkham had a shot a couple of minutes ago. Didn't really concern Chetri. It's a simple enough save for a goalkeeper of his experience. Ali Wilson, Pern looping around outside him instead if he's Catlin in the middle. Catlin barging into the Indian players. I think he's just explaining to Wilson there. He didn't want that pass. He wasn't ready for it. She's get back to playing simple hockey. Great Britain, the Indians playing nice simple moves down the right hand side. Sunil. This time up against Lewis and John C. Clark. And despite his desperate attempts to win the ball back, Sunil turns it over and Great Britain can carry forward. Lewis, back to Martin. They've got the numbers here. Great Britain, if they can use them. Pern, poor decision. Yeah, the simple ball down the line to Ali Wilson. Instead, he went through the body space of Manpreet Singh. Would have been better off just playing it down the left foot 
of the Indian defender, much more difficult to defend. Instead, try to roll it back through the open stick of Manpreet, and even the most junior of hockey players will know that that is where a defender is strong. I'm sure Mark Pern is aware of that too. Here is Pern. This time, goes down the left foot and has the ball intercepted higher up by Manpreet again. Good period of play for the Indian youngster and it's a nice ball in. Fox doing all he can to get his feet out of the way of the ball flying towards him. Doesn't want to give away another penalty corner and offer up a chance to the Indian drag flickers. Jackson now the space. If you can find Tyndall, it's a wonderful ball by Jackson. Tyndall the shot. Off target. He thinks he took a touch off the defender. Went for the upright reverse. We mentioned earlier on in the game when Sunil attempted that skill. Really difficult to master and control the upright reverse effort. But with the ball bouncing, no real other option for James Tyndall. His first touch was a poor one. Ashley Jackson vision played him in wonderfully. First touch didn't really set the number 20 up for an effective shot on goal. Better though by Great Britain. Tyndall may get another chance here up against Turkey. He feeds Mark Pern. He forces the save from Chetri. Jackson with the ball back across. Martin can't get the touch. Chetri celebrates. Great Britain pushing right at the end of this first half for an equaliser. Ashley Jackson's come alive in the last couple of minutes. John T. Clark. Did that hit the foot of Sadar Singh? It did. And Great Britain will have a chance to equalise from a penalty corner before half time. Saravanjit Singh, I apologise. Mistaking my Indian midfielders. Deep discussions at the top of the circle for Great Britain. They've gone with Richard Smith on their first two attempts. He hit the post and his next effort charged down. He is lining it up again. Ashley Jackson there as well. Seconds to go before the break. Jackson and Smith at the top for Great Britain. It's left for Tyndall, interestingly. And Tyndall has scored! James Tyndall with a wry smile. It wasn't the most convincing of efforts on goal. But I must say, I think the little bit of illusion did for Chetri. He didn't expect Tyndall to have the shot. Got it all wrong, the Indian goalkeeper. It was a difficult height, though not the most powerful of flicks that Chechi will ever have to deal with. And almost, maybe, like a slower ball in cricket, it caught out the Indian goalkeeper. Expected the ball maybe to get to him quicker than it did. Just before the break, Great Britain have an equaliser. Into the second half. Game locked at one all. Two penalty corner goals for both sides. Via Raghunath gave India the lead with a low, powerful flick into the bottom left hand corner. And Great Britain responded with James Tyndall off the routine beating Indian goalkeeper Chetri just above his shoulder, his right shoulder. A little laugh was shared between the Great British players. They know that James Tyndall 
can normally really get hold of them. But this time, in fact, the dip of the flick did for Chetri. Ball in! And the touch came off Richard Smith, fortunately, for Great Britain. Turn the ball past James Fair. Will only be a long corner. Of course. Kirkham just in front of his defensive line. Plays the exact same role as Sadar Singh, who is up against him. Sort of pivot. A link between defence and midfield. Fox against the nil. They've really been going at it all afternoon. Poor touch from Kirkham. And forwards possession back to the Indians. Sandeep Singh, long way forward. Touch off Smith. It's the foot of Shivendra Singh. A real live wire up front for India. Hasn't really got going yet. Shivendra Singh. There he is, number 18, just in front of Ian Lewis. Moore floats the ball up towards Mackay. And Catlin has the ball turned over. Hasn't been at his best this afternoon. Nick Catlin, Sunil. Dixon with the touch just drops it in front of the Indian player. And it's lashed goalwards by Tashar. Good save from James Fair. Dixon's touch just presented to Shah with an irresistible bouncing volley in front of him. Those are the kind of ones that you practice when you're on your own at the pitch. Just teeing yourself up. Well, Dixon teed up to Shah then. Fortunately for Great Britain, James Fair was alert to the danger. And that's Turkey doing a job for the Indians at the back. And now, can they counter-attack? Poor hook pass. Saravanjit Singh. And space now for Great Britain as the game opens up. India love to play counter-attack hockey. Sitting back and then attacking with pace and numbers. Problem with doing that is that you stretch your back line and your forward line. So in a sense, when the forwards attack at pace and the defenders are slow to get up with them, if Great Britain are able to turn it over, there's a huge space in the middle of the pitch to counter-attack into. It's the real danger with playing counter-attack hockey. Saravanjit Singh. Loses out to Rob Moore. And here is that space, as you can see. Catlin able yeah, just to jog it forward and lay it off to Martin. Dixon tries to find Catlin ahead of him. Lewis rolling out to the right hand side. I'm sure he's going to try and work with a space to play the ball into the circle. Not on on this occasion to his captain, Glenn Kirkham. Smith sliding attempt by Sandeep Singh. Mackay unhappy that the ball was knocked away from him as he tried to take the free hit quickly. And there's going to be an Indian player in a spot of bother here. Yep. Green card and the British bench want a penalty corner as well. Not sure they're going to get it. Smith will play the ball in though and sliding in front of the penalty spot was Harry Martin. Nice ball in from Smith. And that's Turkey. Lofts the ball down the line and can't link up with the forward line on this occasion. Great Britain trying to get the game going quickly. Alexander down to Catlin. <coughs> Bless me. Draws the foul and the free hit will go 
Great Britain's way, Dan Fox. No options ahead of him, has to go back to Ian Lewis. Lewis slides the ball into Catlin. Reverse stick was a poor one. I mentioned that Nick Catlin hasn't quite been firing at his best this afternoon. And that reverse stick shot was a poor one, just bobbled wide of the mark. Beautiful pass from Lewis. Loves that slide slap. The element of disguise caught out the Indians. Nick Catlin couldn't make the most of the opportunity. India now trying to catch out Great Britain. Fox turns the ball over the back line and quickly glances towards the umpire to see what signal he gives. Worried that potentially he could have been given a short corner. But deliberately over the back line. Umpire on Fox's side on that occasion. Riding the tackle from Adam Dixon. Manpreet Singh. He's got lovely hands. The Indian number seven. Great dribbler of the ball this time. They can't find a pass ahead of him. And we mentioned the space that India do afford Great Britain. Nakai just to get the ball back, playing a little one two with his opposite number. Lovely run this by Rob Moore. The shot blazed over the bye, scored a fantastic reverse stick shot in the pool game. And he looks at the umpire, hoping to get the benefit of the decision. It was a heavy challenge on him by the Indians though, we would imply that he was already falling to the ground when he made the shot. I'm just having a word with the umpire. Trying to maybe encourage him to go to the video referral. The decision goes India's way and I would suggest that it's the correct one. Rob Moore was unbalanced and falling as he took the shot. I think that's what led to him crashing to the ground. Not so much a challenge from the Indian defender. Scored a beautiful goal earlier on in the week against India. So one of those that you dream about, the reverse stick flying across the goalkeeper. So aesthetically pleasing when it works out, that reverse stick shot. Though, <laughs> when it doesn't quite go correctly, it can be so disappointing. And I think Nick Catlin and Rob Moore have experienced difficult to control. Easy to get underneath and blaze it over the bar like Rob Moore or bobble it when you don't get underneath it enough like Nick Catlin. Just trying to strike it with the blade of the stick. Percentage wise, so much harder than the traditional open stick hit on goal. But at this level, all players out there will back themselves until the cows come home on that reverse stick. touch and turn from Utapa trying to link up with Chinglin Sala, two youngsters for India both before this tournament only with 10 caps Ashley Jackson tender age of 24 with already 122 caps to his name the third youngest in this Great Britain squad and already one of the most experienced Certainly is the star in this great British team. One for the future, maybe Harry Martin wins the ball in midfield and Ashley Jackson loses out this time against Turkey. Jackson, keen to get the game going quickly. Plays it into Martin. Chetri with the save and India can breathe a big sigh of relief. Harry Martin though. Probably disappointed he didn't do better with that attempt. It was a wonderful ball forward from Jackson to Martin. Sunil, a chance 
for India with plenty of space in the circle. Got my head in my hands because I cannot believe that Sunil hasn't found a pass. He had so much time and space. And the ball back across goal evaded every single Indian. Jackson on the counter. Can he get there before Sadar Singh? No, he can't. The Indian defensive midfielder doing the hard yards, sensing the danger. Ashley Jackson is the real danger for GB. Fuming at the umpire for not getting the benefit of a decision. Hands on Gumesh Singh. Let's play a long ball forward on the hit whilst running and under pressure. Talk about difficult skills to execute. Lewis, time and space to carry forward. Look up and play the ball ahead of him. This time, James Tyndall under the heavy challenge of the Indian player. Barged over and the ball just trickles over the back line harmlessly. I'm not sure James Tyndall will be too happy at being barged over. With his fiery temper, fiery temperament we'll say. Temper with the potential to be unleashed. Ten minutes gone in the second half. Still just the two penalty corner goals. One for either side. Though open play chances becoming more frequent as the sides begin to tire and begin to chase an outright equaliser. Oh, yeah, Adam Dixon hasn't got the benefit of that decision, I don't know, up against Sadar. Gets penalised and Sunil breezes past Ali Wilson. Takes a free hit quickly. Absolutely no chance that that ball travelled five before getting played in. Though it does go harmlessly past James Fair. Without the Indian touch inside the circle, it will be a great British 16-yard hit out. Look forward later on to the Great British women up against Argentina for the top place in this Visa International Invitational Tournament. Great Britain yet to concede a goal throughout the whole tournament. Their games against Korea, China and Argentina in the pool game. They beat them on that occasion 1-0. how the Great British men have been on a bit of a journey since the London Games were announced. Great British women have been on an incredible run, really have set themselves up to make a push for the medals in the Olympic Games in a few months' time. Tyndall barreling his way towards the circle and John C. Clark spinning left and right. Can't bring the ball under control. Manpreet back to England. Across to Raghunath. The Indian goal scorer. Gave them the lead. About 20 or so minutes gone. Only for James Tyndall to equalise for Great Britain. Richard Alexander is trying to spin. The ball forward, Ashley Jackson was waiting completely unmarked. It did hit the foot of the Indian player. The only thing that stopped the ball getting through to Ashley Jackson. Alexander, back to Pern. Brilliant diving interception from Turkey, showing all his experience there to sense where the danger was. Showing commitment to the cause. Down on his knees to bat the ball away. Manpreet thinks he's won the 
free hit. Instead, the decision goes against him. Alexander takes it quickly. Another Indian tackle on the floor. And it's a good one from Manpreet. Freeing up Sunil to carry. Lovely work from the ball boy on the sideline, though. Sunil's going to get penalised quite vigorously by the umpire. Suggesting that Sunil needs to stop the ball before taking the free hit. Oh, the ball boy was a bit too quick for Great Britain on that occasion. And here, instructions from Jason Lee on the Great British bench to get hold of the ball and try and control the game more at the moment. And able to build possession, Great Britain. And that's almost born out of the fact that there's so much opportunity to run and carry because India gets so stretched when they counter-attack. There's so much space for the British midfielders to drive forwards. And that, by the very nature of the attack, means that they don't really slow the ball down and build it through the layers as they are looking to do so here, heeding the bench's instructions. More down the line to Catlin up against Manpreet Singh. Catlin going quickly. Manpreet touches the ball over his own back line. More hovering over it, trying to pick out options ahead of him. Mackay's ball. Well fielded by Sandeep Singh and another Great Britain attack is unsuccessful. Smith, way to Lewis. Ali Wilson, <laughs> bit disappointed with that mistake and it allows though Manpreet a chance to get inside the British circle. That struck Ali Wilson on the knee. A really poor 30 seconds for Ali Wilson. He protests to the umpire that was the Indian shot that initiated the danger. It was Ali Wilson's mistake on the far side gifted the ball to the Indians inside the Great Britain 23. And now they've got another chance to let it rip from the top. Raghunath is there, Sandeep Singh is on for the first time, a chance for him from the top. Looks like it will be Sandeep gearing himself up. Final preparations going on inside the Great Britain goal, ensuring maximum of our protective gear is on. Raghunath went low to the bottom left of the goal for India's first. It's Sandeep Singh. It's low to the left of the goal again. Fair makes a good save. And the follow-up shot again strikes James Fair. And over the bar. Indians are not happy with the decision. I think they wanted another penalty corner. They're trying to get a video referral. There are no team referrals in this tournament. I think the Indian bench initially thought that the umpire was going to refer the decision himself. Good save from James Fair to deny Sandeep Singh his first flick of the game. And the three penalty corners India and worked the goalkeeper all scored on every single occasion. Fox, nice link up with Pern. There's a little one two with Tur Turkey, the Indian defender. Now Great Britain getting the chance out wide from the free hit. Fox smashes it almost through the Indian blockade. 
15 minutes to go. Richard Alexander back to Fox, looking to pump it in again. Cool pass. And able to link up with Rob Moore. Those balls into the D, they can be effective. But also, percentage wise, I'm not sure whether they're always the right option. Yeah, Dan Fox had a real set India defence in front of him. Went for the hit, and the chances of that coming off are slim to none. Also, the hit. Not always easy to execute. Raghunath just launches the ball down downfield, intercepted by Ian Lewis, and Ali Wilson passes it along to Dan Fox. Richard Smith all the way back inside his own circle. India sitting deep. And the space. Mark Pern. Substantial now. Jackson, he's got players in the middle if you can find them. That ball in was intended for more. We will fall for Mackay. Can he create some space? Mackay with the shot. More with the touch. And Great Britain are ahead. Rob Moore with the deflection in front of Chetri. Doubles Great Britain's goal tally for the day. Ashley Jackson with the low ball in. Initially well intercepted by Ragnath. Chetri though just palms it to Mackay. And we spoke about those cross balls just in front of the goalkeeper. So effective if the strikers are there ready to finish. And Rob Moore was. He scored Great Britain's opener the last time they played India. He scored their second today. As the PA announces, it is Great Britain 2, India 1. Lewis looking long. Almost American football quarterback esque, launching it downfield for one of the runners. Poor play by the Indians. Great Britain will have another chance to attack their circle. Fox to Jackson. A rare mistake from Ashley Jackson. Such a topic of conversation. The effectiveness of the crash balls in. I would argue that Mackay's was more of a shot. Decided to put it into an area. Rob Moore was there to turn it home. Certain amount of relief, I'm sure. For some of the great British players. Be disappointed to find themselves going behind in the first half. And to not be leading as we approach the final 10 minutes. Would be something that they would be desperate to correct. Wilson. Back to Lewis. Do India have a response? Get the ball back. Britain just building play at the moment. So much space in his field for Glenn Kirkham. Smith goes long. Brilliant pass from Smith. Tyndall. Ragnarath was there to meet him. Perfectly timed jab tackle winning the ball back for India. Sadar. Looking to carry the ball through midfield. Hasn't really lit this game alight. Sadar Singh. He's got the skills to do so, as does this man, Sunil. Marshalled by two great British defenders. Wanted the advantage. Sunil then. Let's go back for the free hit. Sandeep Singh across to Raghunath. Fortunately, but the Indian fullback into the foot of James Tyndall wasn't the most effective pass from Raghunath. Neither was that. Straight to Richard Smith on the correct line for Great Britain. And the British men get the sideline ball in front of that packed stand here at the Riverbank Arena. It's been a fantastic test event. It's the final day of the week. Brilliant spectacle. For all who've involved, 
been involved in it and enjoyed the performance of the players on the pitch. And a brilliant insight into what it might be like in a few months' time. Sadar Singh. Sadar Singh trying to get something going for India. Sandeep back to Sadar. Pops the ball out wide to Raghunath. Brilliant tackle by Mark Pern and he breaks free. John T. Clark sprinting ahead of him. Richard Alexander alongside. Alexander looking for the ball back to Pern on the back post. Ambitious effort from Alexander. Nice interception by Kathajit Singh. Sunil. Always operating down this right flank. Unfortunately, well, the Indian player sliding down the baseline, couldn't keep it in play. High press now from India. There's no time to sit back and invite Britain onto them. They need to go and win the ball back. And as a result, they've left a massive space for Dan Fox to carry into. Sandeep Singh, cross to make the interception. Now Manpreet, Britain. Now the ones being stretched by India. Sunil up against Ali Wilson. He's beaten him. He tries to find the pass to Shivendra Singh on the baseline. It was a poor touch from the Indian centre forward. Promising signs for the men in white. Kirkham back to Lewis. Lewis launches another one of those balls into the sky yellow orb of the ball here at the Riverbank Arena. Flying high off the stick of Ian Lewis. Ali Wilson battling away with Sadar Singh. Smith. Plenty of time again for the British fullback just to survey his options ahead of him. Held onto the ball for an absolute age, Smith, and then just drops it off to Alexander. And back go Great Britain. He gets a second opportunity. Oh, he won't. Poor touch on the sideline by Richard Smith. Gives the ball back to India. Can they punish Great Britain? To Shah. Khan Dakar. Can't get into the circle on this occasion. Sadar Singh. One of India's co-captains plays the ball out to Barinder Lakra and he has smashed it into James Tyndall. And James Tyndall is a very brave, hard man, not showing any sort of pain or emotion there. Some ooze from the crowd as they felt the pain of the British forward. Scorer of Britain's first this afternoon, a somewhat fortuitous flick towards Chetri's goal. The equaliser just before half time. The space on this right hand side. Vinya can find it. It is Sunil. Poor touch. He has to go back and get it. But he burns past Ali Wilson. And the cross ball. Well, had that been football, uh, they had a, a Peter Crouch like forward in the middle. They might have been able to turn it in with his head. Absolutely not possible in hockey. Ball flying. At eye line height across the British circle now. To Shah Khan Dakar. Can't get past Richard Smith. Fox just drills it down the line. Almost a case of anywhere it'll do for the British right half, despite not being under a significant degree of pressure. Against Turkey, India's number one, carrying into British territory. Sunil, oh, he controlled that with his shin pad. Ali Wilson, quick to appeal. Sunil's had his number. The last couple of attempts down the right-hand side. Ali Wilson, grateful to hear the shrill blast of the umpire's whistle.
Ashley Jackson. Here's the bellows from the bench to get to centre half. Quickly moves the ball on. Dan Fox on the far side, the latest British player to be unable to control the ball. Now to roll over the sideline. I wonder whether that's something to do with the new turf here at the Riverbank Arena. Slight bobble on the pass this time. It's Sunil. Unable to bring it under control. Wilson launches it into the sky and it's worked out for Britain here. Nick Catlin gets Chetri. Tried to push it underneath the Indian goalkeeper. And Chetri makes the save. That was the chance for Great Britain to kill the game. Nick Catlin hasn't been on top form this afternoon. Seemed to run out of ideas. Almost had too much time to think. Ended up trying to push it goalwards. And it was a good save with the right kicker. From Chetri, the Indian captain. Keeps his team in the match for the moment. Fox. Trying to play it through two Indian defenders. And Kathajit Singh is able to bring it clear. Now it's Sadar Singh up against Jackson. Sadar trying to stretch his legs. Jackson matches him stride for stride. And shoves the Indian players to the ground. I'd say it was a coming together that the umpire thinks Jackson was a bit too aggressive. And in Great Britain, We'll have to play the final three minutes, or at least the best part of it, down to ten men. How can they manage the game? Adam Dixon, a few conversations with the back two, Richard Smith and Ian Lewis. Richard Smith, sorry. Smith, long ball across to Nick Catlin. Sandeep Singh touched it away from the British striker. GB importantly maintained possession as we approach the final three minutes. This is going to be so important at the games. The ability to manage the final minutes when you have a lead. Keeping hold of possession so important. The opposition, the old adage that you can't score without the ball. India need to get possession back. Great Britain need to hold on to it. Pern on his own. The whistle goes. Dangerous play against Mark Pern. Not quite. The important game management that I suggested was necessary. Sadar Singh, the one handed bunt out wide. Shivendra Singh against Dixon. Some one time pass. Cross to Raghunath. He has to go all the way back to keep hold of possession for India. Sandeep Singh. He's got Sadar outside him. He's just going to slide it forwards. It's a really good interception from Adam Dixon that frees up Nick Catlin. The ball drifts over the sideline. That will eat up a few more precious seconds. British bench just seeing how long Asher Jackson's card has left. I want him back on the pitch. Not only the ability that he brings on the ball, which is the extra number in defence. Smith lifts it into space and Catling couldn't bring it under control, but he'll get the free hit. Mandeep Singh, Manpreet, sorry, not five yards away. Kristen's able to take their time. Here from the bench. Keep the ball, keep the ball. Adam Dixon. Back to Richard Smith. India are in trouble at the moment. They can't get the ball back. Rob Moore scored the goal that separates the two sides at the moment. Jackson back on the pitch. Over to Pern, trying to get the ball back under his control. Really good defence from Manpreet. Do India have time for one more attack? Sadar Singh up to Sunil. He's been gunning it 
All second half down this right hand side. He loses out on this occasion. Kirkham with the challenge behind his back. Gurbash Singh, can he get the ball in? He can. The crowd are counting down. That is full time. Despite the score on the graphic, Great Britain have won by two goals to India's one. The crowd celebrate the British victory. Raghunath gave the Indians the lead for a penalty corner after 24 minutes. James Tyndall equalised on the stroke of half time. And then Rob Moore was there to turn in the winner with 13 minutes to go. The end of a hard week's work during this Invitational International Tournament. The important steps taken in preparation for the London Olympic Games. Now both sides would be disappointed to be playing in this third and fourth place playoff. But the British men delighted that they could come away with a victory in the end. They secure third place as they show their appreciation to the crowd at this Riverbank Arena. I'd like to say thank you for joining us and Galvanised Hockey. I've been Tom Lush and we'll see you again soon.